Layla Ali fired back at her critics, and I'm gonna let you guys hear what she had to say, and I'll respond. I recently did an interview with Huffington Post Black Voices, and I went to their offices specifically to discuss an initiative for kids in the underserved communities. Now, it was a Facebook Live interview that lasted about 29 minutes. When they reposted the interview, they titled it, Why Layla Ali Will Not Post About Black Lives Matter on her Facebook page, and they cut it down to a six minute clip. I started getting calls that people were outraged on social media. They were calling me a coon, calling me a sellout, saying that I'm, um, you know, like a disgrace to my father and his, in my family name. So of course I had to go back and look at the videos and try to figure out what it was that got people so upset. And it became very clear to me what the problem was. First of all, the title was very inaccurate and deceptive. I never once said that I would not post about the lives that are being killed in our country every day. Um, I was asked a host of questions during the interview. One of them was related to a specific athlete that's black. And I was asked about the fact that he has to speak out um, for himself and black people without alienating his fans. And the specific question was, what is it about this nuance that makes it so hard to navigate? So I said, hmm, you know what? This is a hard question to answer. I hadn't given it any thought, was not prepared to answer it, but I did. And I said, you know what? On my Facebook page, for example, I don't post pro-black content because I don't want people to feel alienated. Now, just in case you don't know, my Facebook page is mainly dedicated to my lifestyle blog, where I post content about fitness, wellness, health, etc. So I don't post content that everybody can't relate to. That's one thing that I had to say when it came to not alienating your fans, because it is a fan page. The second thing I said was, when you have sponsors, when you have to worry about being politically correct, when you have to worry about stepping on people's toes, all while trying to uplift your people, you have to find balance. It's not an easy thing. That's just real talk. I wasn't saying that you don't say anything, that you don't take a stand. I'm saying that you have to be responsible in the choice of words, how you go about doing things, because you have a platform, whether you're an athlete, an, an entertainer, you know, a singer, a politician, whatever it is, you have to be careful because nowadays if you use the wrong term, it's not politically correct when referring to a group of people, you know, you might have problems. If you say things and step on people's toes, you might get sued. There's a lot of things that come into play. It doesn't mean that you don't take a stand. I never for one minute meant that. In fact, I don't do business with anybody right now that would prevent me from taking a stand against, um, you know, all people being treated fairly. I don't think anybody would because that's just something that needs to be done in our country. So I wasn't even talking about that. Now the last thing that I think really upset people was when I said that to me, black lives matter, white lives matter, Asian lives matter, all lives matter, that's what my focus is. I didn't mean that I'm a part of any movement. I just simply meant that I care about all people. The division that goes on in our country, in my opinion, is part of the biggest problem. So my focus is all people. That doesn't take away from the fact that I love black people. I love myself. I have a black son. I have a black husband. I look in the mirror. I'm black every day. My father, everything he fought for all the years. Of course I love black people, but I also love all people. Now, for people to try to school me on my dad and say I'm a disgrace to my father's name and how he would be so, um, you know, upset at me right now and ashamed of me, really? You're going to try to school me on my father and my history? Do you not realize that when my father was preaching his blackness, that was at one point of time in his life, a small point of time? Not that it wasn't an important time and it didn't make a difference, but as he got older, as he traveled the world and saw in other countries, the same injustices, racism, people being killed and beat down because of the color of their skin, because of their religion, because of their culture. Then he saw, wow, this isn't just a black thing. This is happening all over the world. That's when he came back here and he started preaching about love, tolerance, compassion, oneness for all people. It doesn't take away from the fact that we have a, a problem right now in our country. Black people are being killed every day by police. If not every day, almost every day. In fact, I posted something about it on my Facebook page a couple weeks ago because I saw a video that I thought was super powerful that all people needed to see. And it talked about the history of racism towards black people and the systems that had been put in place. 
and why things are the way they are now and the changes that needed to be made. And it happens to be directly connected to Black Lives Matter. And it was a powerful video that I shared and I would share it 10 times over again. Anytime I see any content that I think will actually make a change and I'm not just saying, oh, we need to do something and I think it will make a change, then I post it. So I don't want everyone to ever think that I'm afraid <laughs> to post something because of um, what you know, business people that I have uh, business with are going to do. I don't have anybody that would prevent me from saying what's on my mind, for standing up for what's right for all people, for black people. I'm hoping that I cleared up any misunderstanding or misconception that you may have had. For all those that left positive comments and understood what I was saying, I appreciate you too. Thank you. So you guys just heard from Layla Ali, the beautiful daughter of Muhammad Ali. She wanted to respond to her critics and all the conscious leaders and black supremacists who have been leaving her very disrespectful comments on Twitter, Facebook, all social media outlets. And I just want to say, you got to be a very ignorant motherfucker to leave this woman disrespectful comments right after, man. Not too long after her motherfucking dad just died. You know how ignorant and motherfucking sick you got to be to disrespect this woman right after Muhammad Ali just died. That shit is mind-boggling, man. But she felt the need to respond anyways. I'm glad she did. She set the record straight and she dropped that motherfucking ether. That Nas ether. That ether, that shit that make your soul burn slow. She said, how the fuck y'all gonna tell me about my own motherfucking dad and how the fuck he would feel? Motherfuckers got a lot of nerve trying to tell her how her dad would feel about her. That's her motherfucking dad. He grew up with her. He raised her. How the fuck y'all know what their relationship would have been like? Motherfuckers got a lot of nerve, a lot of motherfucking audacity. And I want to get on these black conscious motherfuckers and these black panthers. Okay, let's say she speaks out against some shit and she loses one of her endorsements. Are y'all motherfuckers going to pay a bill for her? Are y'all going to give her any motherfucking money? Remember, when Muhammad Ali was speaking out against this shit, he went to jail for three motherfucking years. They took his titles away. He lost all his motherfucking money. Nobody was there to help him. Not one motherfucking soul. Joe Frazier had to give him some money. But other than that, nobody wasn't motherfucking helping him. Left that motherfucker high and dry. Left him out to dry. So all y'all motherfuckers talking this shit, calling this woman a coon, disrespecting this woman. Y'all won't give her one motherfucking red cent. Sitting on your ass. Y'all ain't going to no rallies. Y'all ain't donating no money to these families. You're sitting on your ass talking shit. Disrespect them motherfuckers.